understand this premise. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, cannot bless sin. So if the Holy Spirit dwells within us and is a New Testament believer, he does. He never leaves us. He is there. I don't care how badly you behave. You cannot behave so badly that the Holy Spirit ever abandons you. Because he has a different ministry, ministry in the New Testament. He comes to dwell within the believer. Now, last week, um, Dana Repling was sitting right back there. And Dana said to us, when I asked her, what does the Holy Spirit do in the New Testament different to Samson or any of the other believers? Saul, King Saul, mm -hmm. says the Spirit left him. And he was so desperate for the Holy Spirit. Now, this amazes me about King Saul, that he went to the witch of Endor, a witch, a, a, a bona fide <laughs> person who, who advertised herself as a witch in Endor, Endor, E-N-D-O-R. And he said, I want you to call someone up for, for me from the dead. Seances, by the way, don't ever mess around with, with oh, that man. type of... Of, Amen. Of, let me tell you something. You First hand experience. Within you. Do not take him to where there is any spirit operating other than he. Mm -hmm. So when someone says, I'm, I'm talking to the dead, that's mm. a scary statement. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it takes one to be able to talk to one. You do not, <laughs> you do not, I knew y'all would get that in here. You do not condone, I mean, God says stay away from as astrologers and soothsayers and witches. And um, I, I had someone who um, took offense to my saying that at one point in time and um, explained to me that she was a good witch and I told her that was an honesty more. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's not possible. Uh, there are only two sources of power in this world. Hear this. Now, if you don't, if you think, well, what about my power? I'm telling you, your power comes from one or two sources. It either comes from the Lord God, who had, who is omnipotent, and Satan, who is sec second in power only to him. Mm. Yes, ma'am. So I read this, I, I love the first and second sin. I love David. I do it's just fascinating. I'm going to go see David as soon, right after Jesus and the Lord God and my parents. I'm going to see David. I like him. She's got me. I mean, Samuel, how did she do that? I mean, yeah, that was that was weird. Because she told okay. the truth. That, I wanted to ask that too. Wait, wait, wait. What's, <laughs> what's okay, that? It's, what? It's the. Um, Tell everyone. It's uh, First Samuel twenty-eight, and the woman said, "Whom shall I bring up for you?" He said, "Bring up Samuel for me." I'm so glad you asked that. I actually First Samuel twenty-eight. Well, I was First Samuel 28. Samuel was irritated uh, too. Twelve. Samuel was irritated too. Like, this is, what, yeah, I'm, this yeah. is what I'm going to tell you. Now. Everybody. Y'all pay very close attention. The answer is there. I want you to listen to it, okay? When the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why okay. have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So he said to her, What is his form? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped down with his face to the ground and bowed down. Okay. And this is right. now Samuel said to Saul. So Samuel yes. speaks. Yes. Okay. That's Wait, where is this again? Where is it? 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 Where is Okay. Wait a second. Okay. Now I want y'all to get this. Get this saying. Go back with me this many years ago. Okay? Who had always ministered? God's word to Saul. Yeah. Who was the prophet who all Samuel. 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 Okay. Now, Samuel has died now. Okay. Saul is about to go into battle. 
He's very concerned because always before, who said, go on into battle, the Lord goes mm -hmm. before you. Okay, so is he really wanting to see Samuel? What is he really wanting? He wants a blessing from Samuel. He wanted a word from the Lord. Now, before oh. you're too hard on, on Saul, when we call and say, Pastor, I want you to pray for my next door neighbor, and <laughs> we are not praying yes. diligently for that next door neighbor, are we not doing the same thing? I know. I have a friend one time <clears throat> who did not know the Lord, did not believe in personal prayer with the Lord. And one day she was going to have to take a flight on an airplane. She didn't, she didn't fly. And she said to me, would you pray for me from this time to this time? I said, I thought you did not believe that God involved himself in the affairs of men women. And she said, well, just in case. <laughs> she said, what? Just, just in case. case. <laughs> and and like, that's where everybody makes stuff. Jesus on the airplane. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. I told the little girl, look out, it might be too late now. <laughs>
and our daughter, you know, got when she was born. Y'all come, come on in. Y'all come on in. So we, we are, are looking at 1 Samuel 28. And, and so as, as we look at it, now I see a gentleman heading towards this door. That's going to be oh, it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> he might work some. I can't see my life. It's Samuel. <laughs> Samuel, Jerry. <laughs> okay, so we're look, we're looking at this. You do not ever get ahead of the Lord. He says that there is a season for everything. If you stop and think about that in Ecclesiastes, he says there's a season, and you don't get ahead of the season. And I'm going to tell you something: you can't dodge the season. All of us will go through a season of weeping as well as a season of laughing. Those things happen in life. So Saul says, where's Samuel when you need him? He said, he was supposed to be here. And so he says, fine, it's time to go to war. It was a terrible war. It was terrible. He got, he brought all those, those, um, the stock back and the king back and he has them all in the camp. So what has he done? If if the Lord said kill all the Amalekites, and why did he say that about all the uh, he talked about the Hittites and the Perizzites and Jebusites and Amalekites? Why did he and he had such a harsh sentence on them in when they got to the promised land? And he told Israel, what did he tell them to do? Kill them or drive them out. Why? He said, he said, if you let them stay there, and boy, this is so true. This is so true. Jerry, are you taking the road? Yes, I got it. Okay. We we look at this concept of we know more oh, than God. And there's a I read about this years ago. Let me tell you that there was a young man who was a handler in the uh, like the, the animal place. Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Did you miss the zoo? Pardon? The handler at the animal place? It, it, it was actually at a, a, a place that milked venom for snakes. Oh, snakes. Ew. Ew. Okay. Ew. Okay. Ew. Hey, somebody's got to do it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> got to do it. However, <laughs> he had gone to dinner that night. He was off one evening. He had gone to dinner and he had had. Uh, been unwise about drinking alcohol while he was out. And he was with some friends. He told them, they asked him what he did, and he told them, mm. and they did not believe him. He said, if you come with me, I'll show you. Oops. And so there was a, a poisonous viper. I used to remember, I want to say it was a mamba, but I'm not sure. So don't, you can't remember the green mamba or a black mamba, but it was one of those that was highly Toxic. And because snakes, you know, sleep at night, I mean, they have to have food. So he was, and he was impressing them, his friends, with handling these snakes. And he took one, he said, oh, watch, I'm, I'm not afraid, I do this all the time. And he put it inside his shirt. Okay. As he was continuing to show them the things in the lab where he worked. That's crazy. Well, what happens when you put a snake up against something warm? It wakes up. It wakes up. <laughs> and as a result, he was bitten and died. And, oh. and my point for telling you that story is that we have tendencies to have habits and things in our lives that we think if they're hidden that no one knows 
and they won't do us any harm. We carry them closest to our heart. Maybe it's doubt. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's frustration. Maybe it's it's being um, depressed. I'm sorry, what did you say? Hypocritical, pretending to be what we are not. And we carry that inside of us. Saul was pretending to offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord when all he wanted to do was go fight the battle. He came back to fight them. Whatever we hide that we don't expose through the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit of God will be sickening and deadening to us. Does that make sense? You know, it, 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 it's, we're the ones that's going to hurt the most. It'll hurt others that we love, but it will hurt us if we hide it away. Saul had hidden this ambition away. And so when Samuel gets there after the battle, that it was his time to fight, he thought, you remember what Samuel asked him? The oh, first question he asked, he said, how, how did things go? <laughs> Saul said, I did exactly what the Lord told me. I did exactly what God said. I want to ask you something. How many times have we done that? How many times has the Lord convicted us about a need to read his word? And what do we do? Hmm. One day, I did like it. Take a shortcut, or maybe we can put on the, the verbal. Mm -hmm. And how many? I I can't listen. I'm sorry. I can't listen. I'm visual. I don't listen to people. Unless <laughs> <laughs> someone reading in this very refined English tone, <laughs> I can listen to the tone. And, and and it's amazing to me because always. <laughs> When Saul, Saul said, I did exactly what God wanted me to do. And I love it because Samuel said, excuse me, I can't hear you for all of those bleeding sheep running around sheep in around. your ears. <laughs> bleeding. <laughs> what? Where did those, you know, I can't hear you. That must have been now, quite a scene, Jerry. It, it must have quite been. Quite a moment. <laughs> it must have been, Rianne, but I want to stop for just a second. Because there are people we love that we want to lead to the Lord. And if we have sheep bleeding in our life, mm. Mm -hmm. if, if they can't hear our voice for the bleeding, not the beating of our heart, but the bleeding of our heart, what do I mean by that? My disobedience. My disobedience? And yet, I dress up really well on Sundays. Divided heart. Did you say divided heart? It's a really good one foot in the world. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dee, you're going to have to talk louder because you say some really great things, but I can't hear words. I said, um, having a divided heart um, and so having like one foot in the world and living kind of according to the world's ways versus also having a foot in the ways of the Lord. Mm -hmm. you know? But I, I can't fault anybody because I'm just guilty. I mean, when I read all of the sin that yeah. every person that <laughs> Guilty. I'm and, guilty. And, and we do what you do. Yeah, and then so I mean, I, thank you, Jesus. I mean, I can confess. I, I, I confess. That's it. First okay, John one nine. Right. If we confess, confess now, what does confess mean? Say it. Say it. It is to see it as God sees it, and then say it as God says it. We can't be sorry. I raised sons. <laughs> they were sorry a lot of times. <laughs> but they were not repentant a lot of times. They were sorry they got caught. Right? Right. But there comes a point in time when God has to deal with it. 
And by the way, I mean, Saul's life goes down from that point. Now we get to 1 Samuel 28, and he is about to go to the final battle of his life. Yes, ma'am. I was going to mention to you, um, Jerry, that um, that's also what Saul's action, how that goes against the grace of God, and how often we'll use religion or our religious activities or something to try to earn the approval of God. You know, so Saul going and sacrificing the animal or whatever to try to please God, you know, and then he'll just go get his approval for That's what you wanted to win. Yeah. Yeah, 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 or, yeah, to get a you result get from, you're right, yeah, you know, rather than uh, surrendering to the will of God. And, and, and that is, that is a daily battle. I want to tell you something, we may all have done it, the, 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 you know, the day that we were saved, we may have been, I mean, I went home and wanted to evangelize the world. I, I was only six. But, <laughs> but I started with my four-year-old brother, who my promptly told was going to hell if he did not accept Jesus. Now, I, you know, I can, he is the minister now. He is a minister now. He accepted Jesus later, for real. But, but my point is, there was... There was a passion, a burning passion in my heart for others because I had been called of the Lord and forgiven by the Lord. I, I knew Jesus Christ was inside my heart. And I could, I could, I knew my life was different and would never be the same. And, and I think about this concept. Saul had been anointed by the Lord. He didn't go seeking the office of king. Saul, as a matter of fact, do you remember he hid mm -hmm. among the baggage and <laughs> stuff when he when he was being looked for by Samuel? He said, I, I don't want to do this. I can't do that. And, and I have to tell you, that's a starting place for anything, um, is knowing you can't do it. My precious brother has, had, has moved out of places instead of selling and going to get a different one. He's living with his, his second and youngest child who has four children. And he has no steady, he was, they had their monthly birthday party yesterday, and, and he asked me frankly this morning, did God have already done? But I, I said to him, it's not our power anyway. Just relax. Let all of your power out so that the Holy Spirit can fill you completely. That's the same brother that I told him. <laughs> but all I'm saying to us is Saul was not so different from us. He got into, into the position where he confused the position and God's power with his own. And I tell you what, I don't, I don't want to ask anyone to raise their hand. Don't. How many of us love Jesus and are as passionate about him and his presence in our heart? This moment, as we were, the first breath we took when Christ entered our hearts. Because that's what happened to Saul. That the, the, the responsibility and, and the, the position, he, did, he got used to being the leader. He got used to being the, the final word. He got used to God blessing him. God, God protect us for ever taking his presence for granted. And that's, do you, ever, do you ever wonder why does illness or, you know, a hard thing come into our lives? I've often, when I tell my man, I ask him, is it because that's the only time I really fervent 
stopped you. Can I just think I stopped you the rest of the time? Because that's what Saul's doing here. So he's about to go into battle. There is no Samuel. It's like if the church changes pastors. Or you get a new, you know, uh, small group leader. Or or you've had to relocate in another town or country. Oh my goodness. You have to go to another country. Don't raise your hand. Remember, I came here from Texas. Well, <laughs> you ever thought it's just not like it used to be. Well, God, just God himself said this, I change not. I'm the Lord your God. I change not. So if things are not the same anymore, because we are the ones who did the change. And our country has done that. Our country has done that. Our leadership has done that. And I'm going to go a step further, Sherry. God's people have done that. Yeah. We have done that. And so Saul is trying to find some encouragement. You know, I, I have some friends that only call when something's bad. Mm. <laughs> right? That's the only time I call. And I know it's going to be a lengthy prayer request. I know that when it happens. That is exactly what. I, I can just imagine if I don't know if the angels talk to the Lord like oh here she comes to me <laughs> oh now she's sorry now she's wanting you in her life you know, I don't know that I don't know that I, I, I know that's what the Holy Spirit says to me you know inside of me sometimes but here's what he did he said okay I need someone who can connect with God, I mean, saying, he's dead, what am I going to do now? Look at what it says. It says, he went to this witch of Israel, and she said, whom shall I bring up? And he said, bring me up, Samuel. Right. So she did whatever her, her hocus, pocus. hocus pocus was. <laughs> but <laughs> when what she called for happening happened, look at her response. Look at this. When she saw Samuel, she cried with the Lord loud voice. That's the clue. I just saw it. Okay. The answer is always she never had there. Exactly. She had no power. She's got it. That is it. It's right there. It is. And to me, this is just so amazing because isn't it? I mean, God's word. It's not. Why did she say, why have you seen it? Like, because right. she, okay, who was Samuel always associated with? Oh, oh. Saul. Oh. And he had prohibited uh, it, which, witchcraft. He said, you know, they'll be put to death. Uh, and so he so, in disguise. She's, uh, somebody else. Hey, she's <laughs> smarter than he is at the moment. <laughs> okay? Okay. She was a witch. All witchcraft had been declared banished because he does. He has so much sin in his life. Uh, he can't. He's a politician that doesn't follow the rules. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. No, what you say? Like, 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 what you say? He is the leader of the country. <laughs> he is the leader of Israel. He's so we have to remember that. <laughs> All authority comes from God. Okay? So we have to remember that. That's why we have to be faithful to pray and, and to be right. And but but what we see here is she, this witch. Now, obviously she had made a living deceiving people. And she was deceived. She was deceived <laughs> at this by point. the king. By the king himself. Well, she thought she recognized him because you remember what she said. Now Saul said, no, which that is a medium. Anyone who is a medium or a witch would be killed. And, and, and look at what he said. Oh, as the Lord lives, verse 10, no punishment's going to happen to you for this. So she says, Oh, who am I going to bring up? He said, Samuel. 
And when she saw that he had actually come up, <laughs> she cried to the Lord with a loud voice and said to Saul, You deceive me. Nobody, Samuel would not be here if you weren't Saul. You are Saul. And the king said, Don't be afraid. What did you see? Now, I'm not that interested. I, t I started a while ago by saying that two sources of power. She had been tapped into the source of power of darkness. She, there's no such thing as good witchcraft. I, I understand there are covens that say that, but I'm telling you right now, if your power is not the Lord God and the Holy Spirit dwelling within you in the name of Jesus, and there is a power. Let she said that the I see a spirit coming up out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Now this is interesting. I'll, I'll write this is out. that the is that but that isn't that before Jesus and the and the crucifixion, Jerry, when yes. they were still being held instead of being in heaven? Yes. When he had so done. he was so desperate and he made that door open for that Yes, he did. And it is desperation. People who go to tarot cards, uh, who go to seers, a uh, seances, the <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, can I can I just add one more thing? I'm just yes. going to say it because I've seen it happen. When believers come up and say, I have a vision about you, sometimes I'm like, hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is, well, I'm is. like, really? And what source is that? Because I'm like, like God gave you the crystal ball to see in my life, and I get really annoyed. That annoys me. I'll speak over you. I'm like, don't do that. But just, <laughs> well, it, it, that's vexing to the spirit. I'm like, there that is, is not by the authority of Jesus. That's why I'm trying to teach about the Holy Spirit. Right. That's the spirit. It's because the Holy Spirit is not dependent on anyone right. or anything. Right. Because he is God, the Holy Spirit, right. dwelling in us. And, and he was desperate. And it's sad. I don't understand. He is like Jonah. Jonah was asked to go 50 miles to Nineveh. And he went 500 miles towards the way. <laughs> that is the way we live our lives. Uh, and I told you all to go out. I am for you guys. All I had seen them yet. But listen to what this says. I want you to see this. The king said, don't be afraid. And she well, said, okay. this is verse 13. I saw God's ascending out of the earth. Now see, notice it's little G. Oh. Okay, it's a little G. Hmm. Understand, she did not know the Lord God. She was used to God. I told you, Satan is second in his power only to God. Don't ever. That's why Halloween for me is hard because of so many grown adults mimic witchcraft and, and spirits of darkness. And you say, Gary, we just do it in fun. I'm sorry. But it doesn't feel fun to me. Uh -uh. It, it does not feel fun to me. And listen to what it says. She said, an old man comes up, and Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped his face to the ground and bowed himself, and Samuel said, what, what are you bothering me for? I mean, that's pretty much what he's saying in verse 15. Do you see this? Yeah. What Samuel's looking for? When I was here and told you what to do, you didn't want me. I'm not here on this earth anymore. Now you disquiet me. <laughs> he said, well, I'm really worried because the Philistines are, are fighting against me. Do you understand how ungodly he had become? It is all about Saul. The Philistines are after me. And he says, this is interesting. And he says, so I called you so you can tell me what to do. Really? Yeah. Then says Samuel, why are you asking me now, seeing that the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? Now, Ooh, that's I want you to read the rest of this passage and John 14, which we did not get to. It's okay. <laughs> this is prior to the crucifixion, as Rian said. And if you remember Abraham's bosom, which is the story of the rich man and Lazarus in the New Testament, 
he said, uh, it says the rich man was in Abraham's bosom and looked over and could see um, Abraham's bosom. He was in Hades, he was in hell, and he looked across a great gulf that was fixed. Now let me tell you, you go back and read the last chapter of Matthew, because after the resurrection, it says that the saints who had died were seen walking the streets of Jerusalem. Mm. Mm -hmm. I believe that is when Lord Jesus took the oh. first fruits present to the Lord. Well, God. And from mm -hmm. that point on, now y'all do research, we'll talk about it very briefly early this week. Okay, but I believe that paradise or Abraham's bosom sits empty now. You see, the price had not been paid until Jesus died. The souls had not been ransomed. Oh, the different Christ? Oh, she's already gone to Matthew. Yes, when he wrote, it said then the people rose from their fifths from the whatever. Uh -huh. That's the first resurrection. Actually, that was that was the emptying of paradise. Right. Paradise. Mm -hmm. And right. so, at at the time, I do not believe that any soul can be called out of God's presence. Samuel was not in God's presence. He was in paradise, the waiting place, the waiting place, the holy place. Hades is waiting for us. Fire and brimstone, eternity. Which will come to us in, in Revelation. But that is a very Old Testament, right? Pardon me? Or that the Old Testament. Until, actually, it's in the New Testament, until death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Oh, okay. The, the victory over the victory over sin came with Christ's death. And then they went. And, and then he released them. I believe we're going to talk about the keys of death and hell. That he, I just think Satan thought he had all those people in his earth. And I can just say one day he heard that that that, that lock began to shake and the earth began to quake and it was, his power was broken. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints yeah. who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared yeah. to many. Imagine, yeah. wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's, oh, wow. that's, that's, that's Matthew twenty-seven. I, I, I close with this. I think it's that's... the only one. In, it's the only one of the four gospels that mentions that, right? I know. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And 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 I I believe w with all of my heart that as we look at that, it is to make us begin to hunger. I think they thought the rest Thessalonica, uh, Corinth. All of those new churches, I think that's why they were trying to be ready for the Lord to return at any day. They had seen and heard that it had yeah. I wonder, and it doesn't say after that. No. It's like, did they, where'd they go? Oh, he took them. There's no doubt. They have to, to go, them, yeah, I was going to say. them to the Father and presented them as the first fruits of his resurrection. Walking around and appearing to many. At the ascension on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Did you hear what I'm sorry, no, I didn't. At the ascension on the mountain, remember who was with him? Yes. Moses and Elijah. Right, oh, right. If they were actually if they, they were, were hanging out there too, yeah. So and then the they city. were all three gone. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah. And some of those people that didn't even know who the, those that they were, yeah. they weren't alive back then. They recognized uh, them. They, they want to see them. So, I think that's why the Bible says that heaven will be one of the nowadays we're not. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that that was me. But it was great. <laughs> well, we were talking about, let me tell you, I was a school teacher for years. I had students who would say, before you start that test, <laughs> oh, <laughs> smart. <laughs>
I thank you so much for allowing us into your presence, into your house, into each other's presence, Lord Jesus. I thank you for forgiving us of our sins, for bringing them to our minds, yes. and helping us to confess them before you. I thank you so much for the forgiveness you have already given us. I pray, Father, that you would give us the absolute purpose that we need to have this week to move forward with all the lessons that we learn from your word, Father, over and over and over again. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for being here, for filling us, for coming in through God's word. I pray that you fill us this week. I pray that you guide us and let us know exactly what you want us to do, what you want us to say. Be our words and our actions to other people, Father. I pray that you help us to identify three your Holy Spirit, you can speak with me through this week and use our words. Inspire us to show someone else who you are. Thank you so much, Jesus, for your chapter us in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Let me explain for those of you who came in my life. We were released at Pentecost in Gaza. And so we came in, we came in at 10 30. And that's why I'm here. I'm saying. Out of the okay, so be really quiet because no, we should not.